Hello, South Dakota. I have a message that I want to uh, send out to encourage the church in our state. It's something the Lord has been speaking to me about that has really encouraged my heart. And I feel like I feel empowered to run with it. And I want to share it with those that are believers in Jesus Christ, those who love the Lord, specifically in the state of South Dakota. But hey, if you are in North Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa, or Nebraska, listen up also. If you happen to get in front of this video and you're watching it, I do think that this is a word for the Midwest. But South Dakota, um, I feel like the Lord has been speaking to me about what he's wanting to do in this hour, it is specifically right now into 2018. And how I see it is that for like about the last 15 years, God has been doing something to establish his church as a house of prayer again in the Western world. And so in South Dakota, in the Midwest, um, the value of prayer has been reestablished in so many churches and it's been beautiful. And the reason why I believe the Lord, the Lord wants to reestablish us as having an identity as a praying body knowing where our authority comes from. But that's not like the end of the story. Really, I believe that God has been positioning us as a house of prayer so that we could begin to birth things into the earth. So we could begin to cooperate with the Lord through prayer, understanding who we are, understanding the authority we have, to begin to partner with him through prayer to bring things to pass. And I believe that the Lord said that 2018, there's going to be a missions movement that's gonna be birthed in South Dakota. Um, and uh, that is very exciting to me. I just believe South Dakota is such a destiny, such a future with the Lord. We are not a flyover state to our God. Like we are not barren. We are not desolate. We have a hope, a future. God has a plan for us and it's beautiful. And I believe in 2018, we're going to see the emergence of a missions movement in our state. Um, one of the first things I felt like the, the Holy Spirit is establishing in my own heart is that he is wanting to actually redefine how the church thinks about missions. Because when I say missions, I would guess half of you who are listening just begin to check out. Because you immediately think mud huts in Africa. You think um, Amazon jungles. You think exotic places. Well, certainly missions needs to take place. The Great Commission needs to take place all over the earth. But it is so much broader. It is so much larger than just a faraway location. The, the Lord is raising up a church in this hour in South Dakota who will focus, number one, on the greatest commandment, which is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, with all our strength. And he's raising up a church who will rally around the greatest commission, which is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And so as a church, we gather around the worth of Christ and we gather around the harvest, the need to run into the harvest field. And the Lord is redefining, I believe, what we call missions because every single one of us is called to go. Some of you are called to go to your neighbor next door and some of you are called to go to faraway countries, to um, unreached people groups, but every believer is called to answer the Great Commission. The Great Commission, to go into all the world and preach the gospel was not given to just 12 people um, by Jesus. He, it was given to the church. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are part of the redeemed, you are also hand given by Jesus Christ a commissioning, a commandment to go into all the world, to be a missionary, whether it's in your hometown or whether it's in a different region, a different city, or a different nation or continent. We are all called in this way to be missionaries. There's three things that the Lord has um, encouraged my heart with that I wanna give to you. Number one is I believe the Lord said that now is our season for our Isaacs to be birthed. You know, many of us listening to this video, many of you have so many promises from the Lord that you have been waiting on God for. And you may feel like Abraham and Sarah at 190 and you still don't have your Isaac. You don't still have the, the promised child in your life, so to speak. But let me tell you, I truly believe that the Lord is saying that now is a season for our Isaacs to be birthed. And especially in the realm of a great awakening. There are many of you 
listening to this video, you have been contending for years for a third great awakening to come upon our nation. You've been contending for, you can call it another Jesus movement, the great revival, um, a harvest of souls, a third great awakening, whatever the name is that you call, that you use for it. I believe now is the hour when that Isaac is going to come forth. And you know, many of us have been contending and contending, but you know what? Nobody's pregnant forever. Nobody is pregnant forever. Eventually the baby comes. And this is a season I truly believe where the Lord's established his church and is still doing that as a house of prayer. And from that place of prayer, now there's a great awakening, a great harvest that's going to come forth. And it is, there's never been a greater hour to be alive. Never been a greater hour to serve the Lord. There's never been a greater place to serve the Lord than right here in South Dakota. The second thing the Lord has been encouraging me with is I believe that he's, he's saying in this hour that he is actually removing everything that's hindering or slowing down the missions movement. I, I believe that he's actually been doing this for a decade probably. He's been um, contending with his church. He's been pointing out things that are hindering in our individual lives. There's just been a real death to self. And he is very purposely removing the snails <laughs> from, from the church. He's removing those things that are slowing down the answer to the call to go. That is good news. And if you have been experiencing conviction or the Lord challenging you to be more yielded, oh my goodness, cooperate with it. You are part of, and he wants you to be part of what's coming. And so say yes, which leads me to the third thing that I believe the Lord has shared with me for South Dakota and uh, the Midwest. There is a grace coming upon and has come upon our state to say yes to the Lord. There is a grace to say no to our flesh, to say no to our own selfish desires, and to say yes to the call of God, and to run wholeheartedly after the Lord, and to wholeheartedly say yes to the greatest commandment to love Him with everything, and the greatest commission to go into all the world. The Lord um, gave me a beautiful dream to illustrate this, and just to encourage my heart, I want to share it with you and I'm hoping it'll encourage you too. Um, in this dream, I was standing on the edge of a huge body of water. Uh, it looked almost like a sea. There was a great bridge that, that um, went all the way across this water, and on the bridge, the, it was packed with people walking all in the same direction towards me. And um, it almost looked like when you see people running marathons and they're crossing bridges, you know, like how they're all packed on there. They were all walking, but they're all going in the same direction. And I heard a voice. I heard a voice say, look, you called them. And they answered. And I knew in the dream that this was about the Great Commission. This was about the Great Missions Movement. That as I, and not just me, but others, call people to greatness in this. Call people to say yes. There's a great grace on the body of Christ to, with joy and abandonment to say, my life is not my own. I have been bought with a price. I belong to Jesus Christ and I will go where he tells me to go. And so there were masses of people, thousands of them packed on this bridge. And the Lord said in the dream, this bridge is called my golden gate. And I believe it's because <laughs> it's our gateway into greatness in the kingdom. It's our gateway into fruitfulness. It's our gateway into the expanding of the kingdom. It's his gateway. And when we say yes to that, we get to enter into the work of the Lord in such an amazing way. <clears throat> well, as people, um, the next scene was really fun. I was on the bridge with all these masses of people. They were all walking, but I was running. I was running among them, dodging in and out with my hands straight up in the air. I was shouting worship to the Lord, and I was shouting um, intercession to the Lord and, and praying for the great harvest. And the next scene, um, as the people were, were coming uh, over the bridge, they were following a little footpath along the water, and they had two choices. They could turn um, and go across an, and enter onto another bridge that would take them back to where they started, or they could get on a ship 
and they could go to a faraway land. And I knew what the Lord was saying. There's going to be, and there is a grace in this hour to say yes to the call of God to be a missionary, to be part of a missions movement. And some are saying yes, and they're actually called to stay. And some are saying yes, and they are really called to go. But either way, to go to another nation, I should say, or another region, another city. But either way, both of them are answering the call. There's equal reward. There's equal blessing. There can be equal yieldedness. You can both be equally in the will of God for your life. All it takes is to answer the call. All it takes is to say, yes, I'm going to cross that golden gate. I'm going to enter into the Great Commission wholeheartedly. And I'm just going to, I'm going to do it wherever you tell me to do it, Jesus. Whether it's in my hometown or whether it's in another region, another city, to another people group, I say yes. And the reward is the same if our heart is yes and we're just going where he tells us to go. I tell you what, this is South Dakota's Luke 10 moment. You know, in Luke 10 2, it says, look, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. It means there are so many people who need Jesus in this earth. There are so many people who need to know the name of Christ, who don't know the hope that they can have in Jesus. The, the need is huge. The workers are few. And in the light of this crisis, the Lord tells us what to do. In the light of this crisis, he says, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send forth laborers into the harvest field. And I've been stuck on this word, send forth, which in the Greek, hey, I know Greek, at least one word. <laughs> in the Greek, the word is ekabalo. And literally, it's translated to thrust out, to thrust forth, to drive out. So accurately, the Lord is actually saying, pray to me that I would drive people into the harvest fields of the earth. Pray to me that I would thrust forth my people into the earth to bring in the harvest. This is a violent word. This is an aggressive word. It's not a passive word. It is a powerful word. Ekbalo is actually the same word that was used when Jesus drove out demons. It wasn't this polite little, oh, won't you please go? I mean, there was force behind it. And that is the prayer that we are to pray. And I encourage you to begin to take the Luke 10 2 challenge. I have an alarm set on my phone. Every day at 10.02 a.m., my alarm goes off and I pray the Luke 10 2 prayer. And I encourage you to do the same thing. Set your alarm, 10.02 at night, 10.02 in the morning. Pick your time and say, when my alarm goes off every single day, I'm praying the Luke 10.2 prayer. And I encourage you, pray it as if the souls of your own family are hanging in the balance of those words. Lord of the harvest, thrust forth laborers into the harvest field. Pray that prayer with the passion that you would have if you really understood fully that the souls of your city hung on the balance of that one prayer. And then I encourage you, begin to put yourself in the prayer. Lord of the harvest, send me into the harvest field. Thrust me forth, ekbalo me into the earth, Jesus. Drive me into the harvest field, Jesus. I promise you, the Lord would not have told us to pray that prayer if he was not prepared fully to answer that prayer. Friends, the third great awakening, it really is upon us, but we are in a delusion if we think that the third great awakening is gonna be here without a harvest of souls. It's impossible, it's impossible. The third great awakening and salvations are the synonymous, so the same thing. We cannot have a third great awakening without having a great harvest of souls in the earth. And South Dakota, you have not been forgotten by the Lord. I believe there's going to be hundreds, even thousands of believers from our little state who are going to go all over the earth. And I believe we're going to answer the call to go to our neighbors, to be evangelists and missionaries in our own cities. And there are going to be thousands of, of people, of believers in our state who are going to be called to go to specifically to unreached people groups. 
I believe there is a grace on South Dakota to answer the call. The Lord is saying over us, you're not barren. You are not desolate. I have heard your prayers. I have heard your prayers in this place. Remember 2 Chronicles? If my people who are called upon who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will answer from heaven and I will heal their land. The Lord has heard the prayers of his people in South Dakota and he is healing our land and he is bringing forth fruitfulness. South Dakota, you are a fruitful vine in the house of your father and you have a purpose and this is our moment, our moment on the stage of human history. You know that all of the saints before us were looking for this moment. Abraham, David, the prophets, even the apostles, they were looking to this day. They were looking forward to this moment in human history when we were so close to the coming of the Lord, when the last great harvest was upon us. They're, they're literally, in Hebrews, it says that there's a, a cloud of witnesses, all the saints gone before us, cheering us on, just saying, run it, run it, say yes, run this race. South Dakota, you've not been left behind. South Dakota, you have a purpose and a destiny. And we have to recognize the grace that's before us in this hour so we can grab a hold of it on purpose and we can cooperate with what God's doing on purpose. So I encourage you, if this word has gripped your heart, if it has been something that resonates with you, that you feel the yes and the amen of the Holy Spirit on it, I encourage you to send it to somebody that you love, that loves the Lord. I encourage you to share it on your wall. I encourage you to, the next time that you meet with your Bible study group, call them to the Great Commission. Because I believe just like that dream I shared where the Lord said, look at you called and they answered. That wasn't about me. That's speaking about there is a great grace for all of us who believe to call our to call the body of Christ to greatness in this hour and there's a grace for them to say yes it's a special moment it's a special moment let's embrace it and let's run with it and let's make history in 2018